Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works. Today, I'm going to share with you the process that I used to create these miniature fireplace tools to complement the recent build of the miniature Gothic fireplace. All of these tiny tools were built using pieces of chipboard and cardstock cut on the Cricut Maker. I set myself a personal challenge with this build, and that was to create a set of working bellows on a miniature scale. And in spite of lots of setbacks, they actually work. I just love that. And I can't wait to show you how you can build some too. And I have to begin with a moment of appreciation for the delicacy that the Cricut Maker is capable of. It is astonishing just how tiny these cuts are. Okay, so here are the main components for the bellows. We have two distinct paddle shapes. The nozzle of the working bellows is made from this tiny brass tubing. Part of the hinging mechanism is represented by those tiny pieces. And then we have decorative overlays. This weird looking piece is actually a template for the skin of the bellows. We will be creating a flap valve for these bellows. And that involves layering together all of these pieces you see me working on here. Now I begin the construction by gluing together these two pieces that have a central hole and lining them up and aligning all of the edges using the tips of some fine tweezers. Once these two layers have been glued together, I immediately harden them using super glue. Hardening gives this lightweight chipboard the consistency of a fine grained hardwood, but it does involve using super glue. So make sure you follow all necessary safety precautions. I like to do the hardening on a piece of Teflon. That makes it easy to peel away the pieces, even if I get a little messy with the super glue, which I absolutely do. To join these two layers of 65 pound cardstock together, I'm using Zig two-way glue. I love this stuff. And again, those fine tipped tweezers are the perfect tool to bring everything into alignment. This decorative piece gets glued on the exterior of this paddle shape. You can glue it however you would like. I had the zig two way at hand. So I just applied some of that and then pressed the cardstock overlay onto the chipboard and immediately hardened the entire surface of the piece using super glue and an old gift card. Once the decorative overlay is in place and hardening has been applied to it, I turn my attention to the other component of this side of the bellows and I apply the hardening treatment to both sides of this single layer of lightweight chipboard. Now I'm going to sand the surface just to smooth everything out using an old sanding sponge. I recently acquired a new piece of inexpensive equipment that is going to be in my arsenal for a very long time. And it's this lightweight and quiet rotary tool intended for use during a manicure, but it's absolutely perfect for working on miniatures. As I said, it's lightweight, it's quiet, it comes with a whole variety of bits. And as you can see, it's delicate enough to work on these tiny pieces. Okay, enough about my new toy. Now it's time to complete creating the components for the flap valve. And for this, I'm using a nitrile glove. Yep, I know it's weird, but stick with me. It really is the very best material that I found for this process. Here I'm using two templates, one which will be for the flap valve itself, and the other, as indicated earlier, is for the skin of the bellows. 
In a full-sized bellows, both of these pieces would be cut from leather. But for our purposes, the weight and thickness of a nitrile glove is absolutely perfect. In order to create a functional flap valve, we have to use material that is both airtight and flexible. Here I'm using this little scrap of nitrile to cover the hole in the back of this paddle. A bit of adhesive in a U configuration is added onto the paddle so that three sides of this little flap will be adhered to the surface but that the upper edge will remain free. This is a crucial component of how this valve will function. This little flexible membrane is then pressed into place. Again, verifying that the upper edge remains free while the other three sides are tightly glued down to the surface. And now the inner layer of this paddle is adhered right over the top of the nitrile, capturing it. Next, I'll be cutting away all of the excess material from around the shape that we defined using the template. This will result in a strong, airtight, and flexible skin that will help to create the vacuum necessary for the bellows to function. These three little pieces get stacked one on top of the other. They're going to form the tip of the spout on the side of the bellows that is hinged. Once they've been laminated, they're hardened with super glue. And you'll see how they fit together with the other piece. There's also a little decorative overlay for this piece if you like. It's not necessary, but you can put two layers of cardstock together to create a little decorative shape that will be glued on the exterior of this tiny piece of chipboard. Next, I'm gluing together the layers of cardstock that make up the overlay on the hinged side of the bellows. This too is hardened with super glue. This is why I love working on these Teflon sheets. It's so easy to simply peel these delicate pieces off of the surface. Okay, now you can approach the hinge in whatever way makes the most sense to you. But I decided to use another scrap of the nitrile material, gluing both the paddle and the little tip of the nozzle, leaving just a small amount of space between the two pieces. Once this cures, it will be strong and flexible. And now I'm trimming away the excess through using small needle files and also a very fine tipped pair of scissors. I recommend using super glue to adhere the cardstock overlay onto this membrane. It adheres particularly well with the nitrile and will create a very firm bond that will be long lasting. Give the glue a few moments to cure and then you can start playing with the hinge that you've just created. Now the edges will probably be a little messy. They certainly were on my version. So I'm grabbing a needle file and doing my best to clean them up. It's important to have a smooth surface around the entire edge of the bellows so that we can glue the skin around that edge and have an airtight seal. That ought to do nicely. Okay, now it's time to cut a piece of this 
brass tubing for the nozzle. I cut mine at about three quarters of an inch long using a strong craft blade and taking care to sand away any burrs that might result from the cutting process. To hold this tiny nozzle in place, I'll be using sticky backed craft foam. A tiny piece is cut to fit the end of the nozzle area and then the tube is embedded down the center. Now, to make certain that these two halves fit together closely, we need to also add another piece of craft foam on top of the brass tubing. So I've cut a scrap and I'm heating a needle tool and then creating a trench down the center of the foam. We will be capturing the brass tube between these two layers of craft foam. Now I'm just trimming that little scrap to length. And adding a drop of super glue directly over the brass tubing, taking care not to allow the adhesive to cover either of the open ends of the tube and then pressing the craft foam into place over the top. I hold it tightly until I'm certain that the glue has set. Now, this brass tube is caught in an airtight grip that's going to allow the bellows to function smoothly, even though there's that round pipe between them. Next, it's time to trim away the excess craft foam. And I do a very messy job of this with a very dull scalpel. But my handy dandy rotary tool comes to the rescue and cleans up that raggedy edge. I love this thing. I'm never going to give it up. It does a great job at helping to smooth uneven surfaces on tiny areas like this. Yep, that'll do nicely. Now, I've left the protective paper in place right now. We're going to attach this membrane to the opposite side. For this, I dispense a little bit of super glue into an open container and use a toothpick to apply it sparingly only where I want the glue to catch the nitrile. And I begin at what we will call the neck. We're going to be draping this piece around both sides of each of these paddles. And it's a very finicky operation, it's true. But the flexible and stretchy nature of the nitrile will work in your favor. Not only are you creating an airtight bond with the super glue, you're also able to stretch the material around the profile of each of the paddles. I found that it was very easy to work in small sections, and I do mean small, half an inch or less at a time. Gluing down one section of the nitrile pressing it into place, and then folding the material back to expose the next area. Applying a little bit of super glue along that edge, and then pressing the nitrile into place and holding it until it grabs. There. Okay, now that we have one side complete, we need to do the same thing on the other edge of this first paddle. And this is a good warm up because it's going to be considerably more challenging as we work our way around the other paddle. 
but we'll deal with that in a minute. For now, just make certain that you're creating an airtight bond all along the exterior edge as you pull the nitrile around the edge of the piece. There. So now we have this funny hood that's attached firmly to one of the paddles. To reinforce the neck area, I'm adding a little more super glue there and making certain that the nitrile is wrapped all the way around the exterior edge and is firmly bonded right there at those delicate corners. Now it's time to remove the protective paper from the remaining piece of sticky backed craft foam. And yeah, this is a little tricky, but at this point we have to glue these two halves together. Adhering the foam only to the tiny wedge of chipboard that forms the bottom edge of the hinged side. I know, it's awkward to explain, but I think if you're watching carefully, you'll see what I mean. Now, once those two pieces are joined together, we now begin the finicky process of applying super glue to the edge of the remaining paddle and pulling the nitrile around and pressing it into place, all the while making sure not to glue the two paddles together anywhere except at the very tip. Again, working in little sections really, really helps. It's a good thing that the nitrile bonds almost instantly, or I don't think I would have had patience to complete this process. And then at the very end, we seal up the neck on the second side. Now it's time to trim away all of the excess nitrile that protrudes beyond the upper edge of both sides of the paddles. This is a little finicky to do with scissors, so I begin the process using scissors and then I reach for my trusty needle files in order to complete that trimming process. Now, if everything has gone according to plan, you will have an airtight seal at this point. In order to protect that airtight seal, you can add a narrow strip of regular cardstock right over the top. That's what I decided to do. Again, super glue. Center the strip right over the edge of the paddle and working in small sections, glue it firmly to the upper surface of the nitrile. This additional layer of protection may not be strictly necessary, but I felt a little more confident about the longevity of the piece after adding these strips. I snip away the ends right where they meet the neck, and then I add an additional layer of super glue right over the top of all of the cardstock. Once it's had an opportunity to cure, I come back and smooth out the edges of the hardened cardstock so that the piece feels smooth to the touch. And I'm not taking any chances with that seal, so I'm adding even more super glue to that exposed edge after the cardstock has been smoothed. Yep, that's not going anywhere. I also take this opportunity to make sure that all of the exposed chipboard has a similar finish by adding super glue wherever necessary. And yep, at this point, I can't resist playing with the bellows and just verifying the vacuum is functioning. The bellows are easily the most complex of these pieces, and that's why we began with them. Let's move on to something a little less demanding. This is the shovel, and we begin by gluing these four pieces together. 
of course this will be the bottom of the scoop area and again I'm using zig two-way glue and immediately hardening the piece with super glue the hardening process always results in a little bit of roughness to the surface so sanding is the next thing that must be done okay now these delicate pieces with the prong at one end and the decorative profile at the other are layered one on top of the other until we create a very sturdy handle for our little shovel. In all, there are eight layers of cardstock. I experimented and determined that that number of layers results in a sturdy but incredibly delicate piece at the end of the process. Is it tedious? Absolutely. Of course it is. But I defy you to be able to get these kinds of results cutting a thicker material than cardstock. I really wanted the delicacy that you see in these prongs and there was very little hope of getting that attempting to cut any thicker material than paper. So, layers of paper it is. If that's the price of admission to get this kind of precision and delicacy at this scale, I will gladly pay it. Yep, even before hardening with super glue, this piece feels ultra sturdy. And just look at that profile, I love it. Next, these two elongated wedge shapes are layered together, one on top of the other. And again, I'm using Zig two-way glue for the laminating process and relying on the tips of these delicate tweezers to help me align everything. Now that the handle has had a few minutes to set up, I'll begin the hardening process applying super glue as carefully as I can and smoothing it into the surface with an old gift card. Turning the piece over and repeating the process and yes, sanding, always sanding. The nail drill does an incredible job of helping to create a softly nuanced profile on the handle. I use it to round over the blocky edges and it results in a gorgeous profile. Now I'm using the handle of this dotting tool as a device to help me create softly rounded curves. The ultimate shape is somewhat like a bell. Once you've got it lined up at the apex, add a dot of super glue and tack it in place around the profile of the bottom of the shovel scoop. And then, working in sections, apply super glue and hold the edge against the base until it solidifies. Once that's complete, we'll do something very similar in order to attach the handle to the upper edge of the walls of the shovel. Pack it in place right at the apex and then line up the sides one at a time and apply super glue. Smooth it around and hold it in place until the adhesive cures. Neaten up the edges using an emery board or whatever sanding tool you prefer. I decided that the handle wasn't quite delicate enough for my liking so I attacked it with one of these sanding drums that are also part of the standard kit and I really love how delicate the result is. Next up is the fireplace poker and nothing could be simpler but again we're looking at eight layers of cardstock each one of which has to be carefully aligned with the one beneath it. When all eight layers are complete you'll have a very sturdy piece. 
but it's going to be a little blocky. Once you've hardened it with super glue, we can begin to shape it. Now, I've been using the rotary tool, but I thought I would demonstrate that you can also get extremely delicate results using hand tools like needle files, emery boards, and sandpaper. Now, here are the tongs, and there are 16 pieces in total, eight for each half of the mechanism. I can't recommend these precision tweezers enough. They make all the difference when attempting to align these incredibly delicate shapes. Continue layering them together and aligning them with the help of the little hole in the very center. Remember, eight layers per side. And when you're finished with the layering process, I wish I could remember how long it took me. I, I actually don't remember, but the time went by fairly quickly. I like to listen to podcasts while I create. Anyway, once these two separate pieces have been laminated and you've made certain that they are glued as tightly together as you can manage and that the tips especially are aligned, you can go ahead and harden them with the super glue. Now, I'm using Star Bond. It's my favorite super glue, but any water thin variety will do the job. Once I've tapered the tips of each of the tongs, I'm doing an additional hardening pass. You can see the difference between one that has been sanded and one that hasn't yet. To create a little bit of bulk at the apex of that rounded shoulder, I'm using Popper's Bondo or a combination of super glue and baking soda. The baking soda instantly cures the super glue and it leaves an admittedly lumpy but rock hard substance in its wake. And this can be sanded down to a really smooth surface. You'll want the inside layer of each of the tongs to remain smooth, but the exterior should have a little extra bulk along that shoulder. When you've created a profile you're happy with, you can tint the white surface using an oil-based paint marker or even acrylic craft paint. Okay, now these little tiny washers get added to the exterior of each side of the tongs. Pick up first the smaller and then the larger washer on a regular sewing pen and then thread it through the central hole of one of the tong pieces. There, it's going to look like this. Now turn the piece upside down. Make certain that your other tong is now in an opposing configuration and thread it onto the end of the sewing pen. This is the basis of our hinge. Now add one of the larger washers, followed by one of the smaller, and snug them up against the surface. We're going to tack these into place with a tiny amount of super glue and baking soda. I add this to both sides of the hinge mechanism, taking care not to allow the adhesive underneath the washers. Now 
and once it's been hardened, I reach for a pair of snips and remove the exposed end of the pen. Now this will leave a little nubbin of metal that will need to be smoothed back using an emery board or a needle file. You just want to get rid of the tiny burr. Now I added a dot of Popper's Bondo here on the handle to prevent these tongs from closing too far. It looks like an ugly warp right now, but a little bit of sanding will make it much less of an excrescence and a touch of paint will help it blend into the rest of the piece while it continues to perform its job. And now we have a pair of working tongs in 112 scale and I'm happy to report that they are functional. Here's our poker, delicate and elegant, and with a finish that looks like wrought iron. Yep, they poke. Here's our scoop. I think it's so cute. And does it scoop? Well, let's test it out with these ashes. Oh yes, it does a lovely job. Thank you, scoop. And finally, the bellows. They're tiny, they're decorative, they have a brass nozzle, and best of all, they function. Let's test them out. <laughs> okay, I'm having far too much fun. I could do that for quite some time. So there you have it, my friends. A set of fireplace tools for your dollhouse or scale model or diorama. Look forward to seeing the wonderful variations that you will create with these files. And if you would like to purchase these files on Etsy, be on the lookout. And to all of you, thank you so much, as always, for hanging out with me today. And until next time, Bye.